Today we are tearing down our customer's D3152 Perkins diesel engine out of a Massey Ferguson MF30B industrial tractor. If you're new to the channel, we are Jim's Automotive Machine Shop Incorporated or Jamsy Online. My father Jimmy opened our shop in Northern Colorado in 1983. My name is Nicholas and I am 24 years old and I am taking over the machine shop as my dad is working towards being able to retire and pursue his hobby of farming our 80 acre farm full time. These little three cylinder Perkins engines are fairly common to see in our shop and on this engine in particular the customer complained of a funny noise at idle as well as that the engine was leaking oil out of just about every spot imaginable um, which we find a reason for here in a bit. Starting from the top down and the inside out we're getting the valve cover off and moving on to getting the injectors out which we will be replacing but we're still being careful not to damage anything. Ideally I like to take advantage of the engine stand here on our teardown cart but with this engine there wasn't really a good option for mounting the engine so I decided to just work with it on the stand. Once all the injectors have been removed I wanted to get the rocker arm shaft pulled off of the head which included removing the oil feed line because we don't want to damage that. We will be doing a full valve job on this cylinder head with new valves so one of the things that we will also do is reface the rocker arms. I did still go ahead and engrave numbers on them so that we know which order they're installed on the shaft before fully disassembling the shaft, which did take a little bit of heat on some of the components to get them to slip off easily, but nothing too crazy. And of course, I know it looks like I've got a little bit of a mess going on there, but kept track of everything so that we don't lose any of these parts because we want to have all of them when we go to put this thing back together. Moving back to getting the cylinder head off of the engine, it's important to get these external oil lines removed so that they aren't damaged when we pull the head off of the block. I also went ahead and pulled this cover off of the end, and it's always funny to me when you find the last guy's notes, uh, probably from when the machine shop reinstalled the plate backwards with the no gasket note so that the customer would remember to install the gasket and install the plate correctly before running the engine. For such a small head there are quite a few head bolts and unfortunately the little battery impact just wasn't quite breaking them loose so I broke out my little 3 8 Michael Pro breaker bar that they sent me a while back which has become a handy little tool for me when I don't feel like walking across the shop to get any of the half inch drive stuff out. I know everyone always gives me crap about lifting small stuff with the hoist but I know my back is weak and in general lifting above my waist at awkward angles tends to throw it out so I'd rather be safe than sorry. So it's here that we find one of our first signs of the cause of the oil issue. Looking at the tops of cylinders 2 and 3 there isn't anything too alarming but cylinder 1 appears to have a bit of carbon building up below the top ring travel indicating a broken compression ring. Checking the head out we found kind of some grease in the intake port that feels a little bit dusty and gritty so we're thinking there may have been an issue with dirt getting into the intake which can obviously accelerate wear of critical components of the engine. The lifters or tappets have to be taken apart to be removed from the head and they'll be thoroughly cleaned and inspected for damage. Although we don't see anything that's alarming at this point. With these valve springs not being super stiff I thought I could use a little hand tool to pop the keepers out and then as always giving the valves the old wiggle test to get a feel for the valve guides which we did opt to replace. Again we were mostly finding plenty of carbon buildup and some of that dusty grease on the intake side. Nothing super crazy. At this point it's seeming like the cause of the noise may have been the broken ring on cylinder one that we're going to get a better look at later in the video which is also undoubtedly the cause of the oil issues as the compression would just be blowing past that piston into the crankcase causing excessive pressure um, resulting in oil pretty much pushing out of every possible location. Here we're working on getting the front timing cover taken off of the engine obviously being careful not to damage anything but it does take quite a bit of prying to get um, a cover this big to kind of break loose from the gaskets. Then we can get a good look at the timing gears here and get the gear for the injection pump out as well as getting the camshaft removed. The cam will be cleaned and inspected for any damage so that a decision can be made on whether or not it can be reused. And nothing jumped out but we did notice that the camshaft thrust spring was missing from the inside of the timing cover which could allow the cam to move excessively and could also contribute to the funny noise heard at idle. Speaking of idle, here we removed the idler gear before popping the idler shaft out of place and moving on to getting the bolts out to remove the back side of this cover from the block before I realized I would need to get the oil pan dropped first because there are a couple studs that go into the cover from the oil pan. 
In my few years of doing machine work full time with my dad, I've only worked on one or two of these engines and usually it's just the block or the head. Uh, so getting to do a complete is fun for me because I get to see the rest of the assembly and see how things really fit together. Flipping around to the back of the engine, we pulled off what I believe is the flex plate and shims before pulling the flywheel as I believe the engine uses a torque converter as opposed to a manual clutch, but feel free to correct me. Either way, we're keeping track of the shims so we can get it back together correct as we reassemble the engine. Finally, I was able to start working on getting this adapter plate off of the back side of the engine and it just didn't want to budge. I was worried that I had a bolt left in it somewhere, so I had my dad look at it. Turns out it just needed some persuasion because of the silicone that was used um, was just keeping that thing together like epoxy almost. With the adapter plate removed, I was ready to get back to getting the oil pan removed. And this is where it's nice to have the engine on the stand, but luckily the hoist works to get the bolts removed. Just being careful not to be under it if anything were to break. Once the oil pan was loose, it was as simple as lifting the engine up off of the oil pan, being very careful not to damage any of the pickup tubes for the oil pump. The oil looked pretty typical for having been a running engine, nothing too out of the ordinary. Moving on to getting the rear seal removed, and then we moved back to the front side of the engine to get those last couple fasteners out of the front timing cover so that we could get it removed from the engine block and out of our way. Next, I wanted to get the oil pickup tube off the bottom side of the engine, as well as the oil pump removed so I could get the engine set back down on the stand. Um, my dad has a phrase that he uses to tell you how stupid you look trying to work on an engine that's hanging from a chain, but I can't say that phrase because I like to try to keep this channel family friendly, so we'll just leave it at that. Had to remove a clip to get the idler gear off so that you can access the three bolts to remove the oil pump. We're getting very close to getting the crankshaft and pistons, so I wanted to get the block rolled over onto the deck side to have easy access to do that, but I needed to remove the remaining two head studs. I went ahead and removed all of the connecting rod caps, which were already numbered, and on first glance at the rod bearings, they're virtually perfect, um, just kind of normal wear, which is good to know. It seems like the contamination was limited to the upper side of the engine. It doesn't really look like any dirt was in the oil or anything like that. Before turning the engine back over to get the rods and pistons out, I figured I would get the crankshaft removed. So I got all of the main caps pulled off. And for the most part, the crankshaft looks to be in very good condition. It'll obviously get checked out, but it'll very likely just need to be polished and will be reused without having to be ground. Starting with pulling that number one cylinder piston out, the damage is pretty obvious. The top piston ring is in about a million different pieces, as is the second compression ring, and the third ring and the oil ring are completely worn out. Surprisingly, neither of the other two pistons had any broken rings, and looking at the bearings we see pretty normal wear, with the exception of one rod bearing that was normal aside from one groove where the crankshaft may have a small ding, but nothing catastrophic. Checking out this number one piston, it's probably a good thing that they didn't continue to try to run this engine any longer. Obviously the cylinders are trashed and it seems like they all had a bit of dirt in them, but the damage to this piston was nearing catastrophic. Take a look at the area where the piston groove has worn into a crater, likely from pieces of the ring bouncing up and down in the groove during engine operation. It's pretty amazing to see what happens when things start to go wrong in an engine, especially when you catch it at a point right before it went really, really wrong. Our final step here is to get the clips out and get the rods off of the pistons. The rods will get new pin bushings installed, and obviously the pistons will be tossed into the recycling as they are no good. That pretty well wraps up the teardown of this engine. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe, drop a comment with any questions that you might have, and stay tuned for the upcoming videos on the machine work and reassembly of this engine. Thanks for watching.